Welcome everyone to today's general MCU. I'm Sid, I'm the CEO of GitLab and uh, the first topic is incremental ACV. That's our most important goal and that's looking good for the quarter. Uh, we expect to, to come in above plan and there's even a 50-50 chance we'll do $10 million in incremental ACV this quarter, which would be uh, way above plan, 2 million above plan and which would be kind of uh, awesome. Second thing on my mind is the GitLab.com move that's gonna happen this Saturday. Uh, I think the team has done a really good job preparing. One of my worries was uh, the database server. Uh, one of the few things in GitLab that's not sharded, that's a single point, is the database server. Uh, so we had to make sure that the database would perform better on Google uh, cloud platform than it would do on Azure. And uh, the team's done some great testing to prove that is the case. Third thing, uh, Cortland resigned. Uh, we, um, he was the, uh, kind of a senior director with a lot of different things on his plate. And we've taken that opportunity to make a flatter, simpler marketing organization. Um, maybe that's a uh, good thing to kind of link to a future, the future state of marketing. Um, future state, there we go. Uh, fundraising, uh, so we raised, uh, we, we have a like, uh, uh, the first VC fund that committed to us, but the more friends, the better. Um, and our existing investors are prepared to make room for another investor to come in. This whole thing about making room is a bit of a weird concept, so maybe I should elaborate a bit. Um, as soon as one investor commits, mostly the rest of the market says, oh, well, this is apparently a good deal. I want to invest as well. And that's what's happening here too. But the company only needs so much money to get us to IPO with some money in the bank. Um, so now we, we're not raising that much money, but more people want to put money in. I think we could raise like two times the amount we set out to do. So you have too little investment room, so people have to make place for each other. And if existing investors have the ability to do a pro rata, like put in as much money so that their percentage of the company stays the same. So they don't get, hey, they put money in so they don't get diluted, um, but they're willing to give up that privilege to make room for a new VC so that we have another VC on our team. And I'm talking with three VCs right now to see which one is the best uh, fit for our needs. They're all pretty great ones. So it's uh, that's gonna be a tough decision. Another thing I want to touch on is that efficiency comes from reducing the need to coordinate. Like if you need to coordinate, please do, but whenever you can avoid needing to coordinate, that's great. So if you could say, hey, that's, that's your project. If you just do what you please, hey, that's your decision. That is extremely powerful. Like if a, if a response is, hey, let's sync on that. Let's discuss that. Oh, we'll decide it together. That sounds nice and collaborative, but it's inefficient. You're, you're placing, you're making a roadblock. So anytime you can say, oh no, that's, she is in charge of that. That is a great thing. Um, and I've, I've, wherever I find those situations, I try to like tease out, like, can we make this simpler? Can we just decide this person does X, Y, Z? Um, another thing I want to touch on our value of iteration. Iteration is a publicly facing result. So if you say, hey, I was working on that, I iterated on it four times. Uh, if you were just making changes to a draft that you haven't published, it's not. we don't consider it an iteration. It might be according to the dictionary, dictionary definition, but for us, an iteration is when, it's, when you get feedback on it as it's released. So you release it and then you do a change. That's an iteration. Otherwise, you're just changing things. That might be very well, but don't call it an iteration so that we don't get confused about what, what, we, what we mean with iteration. Last thing, the, the summit is coming up. I'll be, uh, tomorrow I'll be flying and from then on, I'll be on the road, basically uh, 
until the summit starts. Um, the goal of the summit is to learn to get to know each, to know each other better. Um, so it's focused around that. It's focused about around uh, doing excursions together, having some uh, downtime for hanging out and for, for, for doing some work, which also has to happen, uh, and doing the user-generated content sessions. Uh, the user-generated content sessions are the pinnacle, I think, of the summit. Uh, our mission is everyone can contribute. Everyone can contribute by proposing sessions, by voting on sessions, by attending sessions. Um, all other companies I know of use summits where they have everyone in the same room to give big, long presentations about the new plans for all the different functional departments. We're not doing that. We're not putting you to that. When we have an announcement, we'll do functional group updates. We'll tell you, we'll send you the merge request. We're not making you fly all the way out to South Africa to have you sit through that. We want to do things that are cross-functional, that involve different people and that come uh, from the individual contributor level. So it's, uh, <laughs> when you go to Burning Man, they have on your ticket, like it's not a festival, like we're not organizing something for you, you make it happen. Uh, this is not Burning Man, but it's also not your regular company summit. Um, you make it happen and you make it happen by participating in those user-generated content sessions. You make it happen by going out of your comfort zone and talking to people you haven't talked to before. You make it happen by seeing that person that's standing alone or kind of wandering around and reaching out to them. That's what the summit is about. That's, 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 that's why we're there. Cool. Um, Simon asks, is there a deck? People linked along URL, which I suppose is the deck. John May, is the investor you announced to the team still leading the round? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, John. And uh, we, we, that, that's all going well. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy it is. Yeah, this is about like not the lead investor, but uh, kind of the, uh, <laughs> well, if one is the lead, then this would be the follower. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure we'd call it that, but it's about that. David is going to go on a rampage of hanging out with every single person in the company, which is great. Brenda asks, Brenda, do you want to verbalize your question? Happy to. Yeah, no, I was just curious being brand new, uh, if there is a way, if, I would love to get everyone's feedback of who worked with partners, what you guys have enjoyed, what is working, what's not working, just being brand new, being able to gather a lot of that and getting everyone's feedback would mean an enormous amount. So um, is there a way that I can get that time? It sounds like there's a proposal process. And since this is my second day, I might not know the best process to do that. Yep. So there's a proposal process. Please ask in the Slack channel, I think Summit, um, Okay. How Go that ahead. works. You can propose a session. Um, then people still have to vote on it. So, <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> make it, I better make sell it, it well. Okay. Make it a juicy description. And then if you find that it's uh, just you and Priyanka in that session, like, then just don't, then just don't, don't, don't do have it. a session. We'll There's, go to someone else's session for sure. Yeah. And in general, we don't want functional sessions, but okay. considering that uh, you're really new. And alliances uh, is is like the department that is cross-functional by default. That's why you're there because you got to work with the whole rest of the company. So yeah. I I think uh, I think uh, it's appropriate to to okay. to have that session, and then uh, you'll see whether whether you get enough votes to actually have that session there. Perfect. Well, and, uh, we're John on. John we'll John linked the uh, one together. Yeah. And thank you, John. I got it now.
Cool. I uh, don't see any other questions or uh, remarks. Molly so, so. asked a question. Um, Thank you. I was just about to jump in. <laughs> I was going to say, um, sorry, my dog's been crying at herself in the mirror all morning. I saw a couple people, um, some videos of that, but it's been quite annoying for video calls. Um, I'd be curious, how do, you, how do you expect, if any way, the summit to be different now that we're going to have customers in attendance? And, and what things should we be aware of? Or um, I guess, do you expect things to be different in any way? Yep. Um a bit so having customers there has um, the risk of overly focusing on those customers and um, in general in like our, our non-summit days when there's a customer we, we 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 are there for the customer so they when they're there they're our primary focus now the summit is not going to be sustainable if it's just our team hanging out. I don't know of a company of 2000 people that can do something like that. I do know of uh, companies that ha can have a very big event that includes customers. Think of like Dreamforce and things like that. So the customers are a way to start making this sustainable. Now, the more we can treat customers as like, another person in the GitLab community, the better. So I'd love for us not to, not so much to put up a big show, but for, for them to participate. So I would love to have a customer propose a user generated content session. Like that would be a big, big win. The more they can feel like they're part of a community and the less they feel like they're being sold to, the better the outcome. We're, we're a very special company. Like everyone can contribute. The, the co-creation we do with customers and users, that's unique. That's our strength. So it's not going to be like Dreamforce where we, where we put up big screens and we present to them. It has to feel like getting to know each other better for the users, contributors, customers, team members. And the, the more we can, we can generate that feeling, I think the better it is. So we're changing the format from the summit from getting to know your fellow team members better to getting to know the GitLab community better. And customers are also part of the GitLab community and we should treat them like that. But it's going to be very, very hard to that they they also think they're signing up for a festival and they're going to get like tons of tons of presentations and workshops so managing those expectations and making sure they they know that the, it is what they make of it like they have to get involved themselves it's a diy conference that's going to be a very hard process for us to go through and we're starting it now we've invited five customers um, so we're making that beginning. The next summit will have more customers. We're also separating it a bit in time, where we first do only team members, then getting some core, core uh, community members in, uh, core team members in, and then customers. I would love in a year or two, or in two years, for us to have one week that includes both team members and customers where we're on equal footing, but I'm not sure that's possible, but we should strive to get as close as we can to that. So yes, customers will change it. Um, hopefully we keep the good things. Um, and customers will also change it in that it's, that it will not have to change that we can keep doing this for a very long time and that it will, uh, will be, impossible to look at this as just a, a cost center with unqualified benefits. Thank you, that was great. Thanks for asking the question. And Simon has some exciting news. Simon, you wanna verbalize it? Yeah, so uh, Derivco have been with us since 2014. Um, when they originally signed up, I think their deal was worth a quarter of our annual revenue. Uh, just to put it into context. So uh, they're going to be sending two guys from their team along to attend for two days. And they're going to do a UGC on DevOps at Derivco at their organization. 
Um, they're two really good um, people to have coming along. One of them, Greg, has been using GitLab since they got it four, four years ago. So um, yeah, very excited to have them doing the UGC, but also in attendance. So I'm happy that we're uh, inviting customers now as well. Very cool. Thanks, thanks for mentioning that. That's really exciting. I'm very excited about, uh, about our customers. Uh, we talk with a customer in the financial services industry uh, that was even uh, in the Netherlands that, that was considering hiring people, especially to contribute to GitLab. If we can make that happen, if we are so welcoming and show so much interest in working with them, collaborating with them, uh, also an interest on, on a human level and who they are, that, that people start contributing uh, instead of just being a customer, that will be a sea change. The biggest risk as we grow as a company is that we get distanced from the community where the feeling like, oh, you're in the company or you're outside of the company. That is, that is a very, very big danger for us. There's a reason we're all remote and part of that reason is so we're all on an equal level with anybody else in the issue tracker. Um, so I hope we start, we, we almost, obviously we'll refer to them as customers, but stop thinking of, of like, we have team members and customers and it's an inside and an outside. No, it's all people that care about GitLab and it's all people that contribute to GitLab in, in their way. And look, only people that care a lot about GitLab are going to go to the time and effort to fly out, maybe except for the Rivko who's based in South Africa. But even then, like it's, it's a big chunk of your time and it's not a festival. Um, so I hope we can create that, um, that vibe of, of, a, of a movement in, instead of um, an organization selling you uh, a widget. Yes, yeah, Cindy, think of everyone as GitLab contributors. That's exactly the mindset. Thanks for that. And yes, oh, there's also uh, Siemens who uh, pays GitLab to contribute, or pays people to contribute to GitLab. So it's happening. Um, and that's, that's needed because even with all the engineers we're going to hire in the next couple of months, we won't be able to pull off the vision of a single application for the whole DevOps lifecycle by ourselves. We need our users and our customers to contribute to that. Cool. That feels like a, an appropriate ending. Thanks Molly for unleashing this. Have a great day, everyone.